Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with a new PB&J card class. And today's video is going to be a little bit longer because I wanted to talk about this sort of idea of how to avoid crafty decision fatigue. So sometimes I feel like we can get all of our newest batch of goodies or stamps or dies and then feel like, overwhelmed with sitting down and actually making something with them. And for me, that comes from just having to make too many decisions to get started. So in this video, I'm going to share some tips in my design process in this instance. And my first tip is you don't have to start with a card in mind. And you can sort of work in sort of different sessions of using your goodies. So the first thing I like to do, if I get a batch of things in that I'm going to work with or that I haven't used yet, I just have a die cutting session. And I will just sit and crank out bunches and bunches and bunches with my new dies or even with some in my stash. And I just store my dies and the pieces I have cut in just a regular old envelopes. I cut them from a variety of different papers. And I just, I don't have to make any decisions except just sit there and die cut and sort of build up my options for the design process later on. So I'm just sharing with you here what I did for this sort of a crafty die cutting session. So I don't have a card in mind at all. I have picked out a few of the products, a few of the dies and stamps that I want to play with that I've been anxious to use and I'm just going to share with you my process. So First off is just a die cutting session and just running these through the die cutting machine. Not any decisions to make. You can have a show going in the background, music, a podcast. You can be chatting with somebody, a phone call, and just cranking things through your die cutting machine. And I feel like I'm still being creative. I still get that sort of creative release and rest and relaxation from this hobby but I don't have to make any decisions, which sometimes keeps me from getting started on making a card because I just, I think I make a lot of decisions all day long and sometimes I don't have any energy left for it when it's time to do my crafting. Now, all of the products that I'm using here, I will list down in the YouTube description box below with links to the Penny Black store. So if you see anything you're interested in, that will all be listed for you down in the YouTube description box below. I kind of pulled out some of my new dies that are love themed and some older ones from my stash. For example, this frames and I cut several from standard size card. Now my next tip, and I kind of mentioned it before, is envelopes. Now you might have something else that you use to store different things, but I find just a box of like 100 envelopes from Walmart works great. This is a photo box, so I've got the idea I want to make love theme cards, and so I'm going to do all those die cuts, have my die cutting session, and I'm just going to put them in envelopes with the die and keep them in this little box. So I've had my die cutting session. Next, I just have a stamping session. Again, keep in mind, I don't have any cards in mind yet at this time. I've done all that die cutting. Now I'm just gonna do some stamps. So I was really excited that Penny Black in their recent Showered in Love collection, they featured some of these fan favorite woodblock stamps. So these are the stamps I have in mind that I want to use on my future cards. Another tip is when you're having your stamping session, stamp some simple cards while everything is out. And this will make more sense here as I show you. So I have just a piece of Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. I'm inking my stamps with VersaFine Onyx black ink and I'm stamping them onto that watercolor paper. And then look here, remember I did that die cutting? I wanna make a set of very simple cards with those frames on there. And so while I'm stamping everything, I'm going to stamp some of those simple cards too. So grab my next stamp and I'm going to stamp it again onto this watercolor paper. And then I'm going to grab that already die cut frame and I'm going to be making just a nearly one layer watercolor cards with these. Now I have to tell you I haven't used woodblock stamps in a long time and I forgot how beautifully they stamp and how fun they are to work with. So I know these are fan favorites from Penny Black. They're limited um, release so once they're gone they're gone but if you haven't used woodblock stamps in a while 
it is time to try it again. Oh my gosh, it was a lot of fun. And I love that like these, if you do tiered trays or at Valentine's in your craft room or in your house, you could set a couple of these up because they're so cute on the wood block stamp and just enjoy it almost as like a decor item. So you can see here, I'm getting at least, at least one impression on the watercolor paper and then one onto these framed pieces. And again, this is just a stamping session. I'm not making any decisions at this point. So again, I'm avoiding a lot of decision making, but still getting to be creative and to enjoy the products that I have that I want to use. And it's much easier for me sometimes to just know, oh, tonight is just stamping night. I'm just gonna sit down and enjoy stamping. I don't have to think about colors. I'm only getting out a limited amount of things. So even that is less decision making, less overwhelming to kind of do this in sessions or groupings um, or batches of things. And I also on these these simple cards, remember that tip, stamp a set of simple cards. I even stamp the sentiments so that uh, they are nearly done now. So I just wanted to show you that. And here is what I have stamped. So I have these simple cards ready. If at any time I want to make a card with those, they're just ready to go. And that's where that sentiment came from. Again, I'll have all of the products listed and linked for you down in that YouTube description box below. So we've had a die cutting session. We've had a um, stamping session. We're using envelopes. Now it's time to just relax and paint. So I am using Secure, my Secura Koi Field sketch box. I've got a paper towel and my painting water. I'll have those handy as I am painting. You can paint or color, use your markers, whatever you love, but now you have, you can just sit down and paint and color. And maybe you have a short amount of time to paint. It's all ready to go. You can just paint a little bit. You could do five minutes here and five minutes there because it's all ready for you. I like using the Secura Koi Field Sketchbox because it's small and so I could take it out into the living room or the kitchen table and um, do it while a show is going on in the background. You could even, if you have to go somewhere, you could just take this, um, this with you wherever you are going. And I the woodblock stamps are really fun because right on there is some color suggestions. So if you don't want to make any decisions about even what colors to use, you can look to those to um, help you out, to guide you on what to use. And I keep my coloring on these very simple. So I'm just using what is in my Secura Koi field sketch box and just doing very basic coloring, not a lot of shading. And these images are so, so cute that the image speaks for itself. Your coloring does not have to be fancy and it's going to be adorable because the illustration is so high quality. Now, if you aren't into critters or you aren't making love theme cards, you can still follow this sort of design process with whatever you have on hand or whatever you are interested in. You can still use the envelopes. You can still do a die cutting session. It's just a really fun way, I think, to approach crafting and limiting the amount of decisions that you have to make. So you can see already there's lots and lots of time here of fun and enjoyment of the hobby, but haven't even had to make any design decisions yet. Just enjoying the different processes um, in creating. So I kept some of this painting in here just so you could see the technique that I'm using. Again, this is on Canson 140 pound watercolor paper stamped with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. So that's a waterproof ink. So I can just paint right on top of that using that Secura Koi Field Sketchbox watercolors, but you could use whatever you have on hand. And sometimes I even try to leave little areas of white within the image because I think that adds to the playfulness of it. You can see a little bit on the sort of the wrapping around that bouquet of flowers where I've just left some white in there and it just adds some life to the image and the painting without having to do anything complicated.
And here I'll just move on to the bench. And you can see I'm just quickly putting a little bit of paint on there and not spending a ton of time on that, not stressing about it, just getting some color on there and the image, the illustration itself just comes to life. Just add a little bit of gray here around their little tummies. I think this is just one of the cutest stamps ever. <laughs> so here I've just taken my time and I have painted these. Now I'm planning to cut these out and so you notice I didn't paint everything on the images so if I knew if I wasn't going to use it then I didn't paint it. And here are all of those simple cards that I stamped and when I was in this sort of painting session I painted those two. So next the designer tip is fantastic and I say yes fantastic fussy cutting. Some people do not like fussy cutting and I completely understand that I used to really like avoid it but I do use some good cutter bee scissors and I have found if I'm batching it and that's all I'm doing. I actually really enjoy fussy cutting. You can easily take it like, I'm one of those people that has a hard time just sitting and watching TV. So this is something that's really easy to do while you're watching TV or watching a movie. I do not get too intricate with it. So I cut off a little bit of fur. I sometimes, I don't worry about whiskers as you can see here. Um, I do take some desert sand, memento ink and a, um, sponge applicator tool and I do dab that around the edges and it hides any imperfections. So we're back again to my other designer tip I mentioned before is the envelope. So now that you have all of these pieces done I like to just lay them out and just start playing around. So I've got all these die cut pieces, I've got all my fussy cut and colored images, and now I'm just going to start moving things around and seeing what I can come up with. And I find that this is where I get a lot of ideas I don't think I would normally have thought of if I didn't have the pieces ready to move around and try them out. So what I do is I try that out, then I have some standard size cards already cut and I can place them on there and then I just put it in an envelope. Often I will snap a picture with my phone if I really have a design and I think I'm not going to remember it and I will snap a picture with my phone before I slide it into the envelope. So again, not a lot of decision making here, more just feeling like playing around, trying things out until I find something I like. You can see here I tried several different things in there. I felt like it looked a little plain. So again, I had a border piece that was already in that die cutting I did and I can play around with that and be like, oh, I think I really like it like this and I can tuck the cat in here. The cat seemed to fit the best in that letter O. If I wanted, I could snap a picture of that with my phone and I slide it into the envelope. And I just keep playing around with the pieces I have left until I come up with something that I like. So I like that together. So I'm gonna, again, and I just keep reusing the envelope. So once I make these cards, I'll have these envelopes and I just put them back into the envelope box so I can grab them the next time. So I'm just kind of auditioning different pieces together and now I find I'm using all of these different dies, all of these different stamps. So the things that you might have purchased but you haven't used or you're like, oh, I want to try that. Now they actually start ending up on the cards. At least for me, that's how that goes. And for me, this sort of rearranging and auditioning pieces is really fun. It doesn't feel as much like looking at a blank card and trying to decide what to make. 
So just trying out these different pieces. I loved how he looked running along there. Now, I didn't have the patience to fussy cut the balloons that are part of his stamp, but I knew I had this die cut that I had already done in my die cutting session. That's why I didn't paint his balloons. Um, I am just planned to use that die cut. I had a couple different heights of that hugs edger so I can find one that works. Here you can see snapping a picture of that one because I didn't think I would remember exactly how I had it positioned. So I've got that before I slide it into the envelope. And remember that box that I showed you at the beginning? These ones that I've just arranged and put into envelopes, they just go in that box. So the next time I actually have time to sit down and make a card, now I can just pull out one of those envelopes and work on that card. And it's just a matter of maybe adding a secondary sentiment or some background inking or just some coloring. But the um, decision making process was minimal and it's already done. So now we'll just move on to that. I thought you would like to see how these cards came to be after I went through that design process. So I did film as I sat down to make these cards. I pulled out each envelope and then I began making them and you can see again not a lot of decision making has to happen not a lot all at one time and there's never that just sort of blank canvas or blank card base staring at you um, and trying to figure out what should I do what should I make so these are the pieces that were in the envelope. I did do some distress inking onto that background. You'll notice that I'm just working on panels of paper. This, these are all standard size A2, four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards. So that background panel is that size and then I can just add it to a card base once it's complete. I'm gluing multiple layers of that U together because I like the dimension that adds. I find it's easier to do that than to try and add foam behind those thinner die cuts. This is also a great way to mix and match newer items from items that are in your stash. So here I have, this is a new die from Penny Black, but I'm mixing and matching it with that fan favorite um, stamp of that cute little mouse. So I decided to go with similar colors, but a little bit darker for the word, but you get a little bit of a tone on tone look. I'm going to add this to my Misty stamp positioning tool. Now again, all of the colors I'm using, the inks, the papers, all of that is um, going to be listed down in the YouTube description box below in a supply list. So if you want any of those details, you can check those out there. Now I did trim this stamp. If you saw that, I probably should have warned you <laughs> that it was coming, but don't be afraid to do that with your clear stamps. They will slide back together on your acrylic block if you ever want to use them all together. So I'm stamping my sentiment, handmade just for you. I love this large U die. I have used it a lot, but it just seems like it lends itself to so many different designs. Here I have that rose die that I planned for that little critter to be holding. So I'm just inking that up. I used a post-it note to mask off the top of the rose so I didn't get any ring, a green up there. Now I'll just mask that off so I don't get any red down below. This is one reason why I prefer to just do all of my die cutting in white because I do it in just like a die cutting session before I know what I have in mind. Then when I get to the card making process I can get out my inks or my paints or my markers and color it for the specific card that I'm working on. But you, if you already know what colors you think you would like, you could cut these from colored cardstock. That would be one less step that you would need to do when you're putting your card together. So it's really up to you. I'm just using an ink blending tool with foam pad on there to add that color. And then I am ready to position that on there. And I think I have a picture of that card coming up and then we'll jump back into this next card. So yes, here is that finished card with that cute little mouse handmade just for you. And I've just added some self-adhesive pearls. Now we'll go back to this love, 
that I was showed you just a little peek at before and we will make this card. So again I glued those die cuts love together just to, for a little bit more dimension. I'm going to ink this up because I decided now with that cat I wanted to sort of accentuate the little bit of red that is on the sweater. I think that cat is so cute that extra large love woodblock stamp for that cat and again this is a new creative die immense love which is so great so versatile because you can pretty much put anything you want into that O and you already have sort of a design idea right there built into the die again that's less decision making when you have dies like this that really sort of lend themselves to the design so I've added that to my card now I take this cute little cat and position him in before I glue down that love so I can kind of tuck him inside of there. I think that's just a fun little touch. And now I'll put glue onto everything. And just a little foam tape behind the cat. Pop him up. You can see that cross stitch border die down at the bottom just to give this a finished look. And then I will just add a sentiment strip and a couple of pearls on there to finish things out. And you can see that card just came together really easily, just pulling out that envelope and finishing it off. Next up, we'll do this card. So all I'm going to do here is just some inking for that background and add the sentiment. So I'm using my Distress inks again. I'm starting off of the edge and working my way on in a circular motion, layering some of those inks. Just kind of looking there to match up the color to the leaves on the bouquet and some of that yellow. I just wanted this to have a really rich saturated background so that those hedgehogs just really um, popped off the page. And that stitch die cutting was again one that I did during the die cutting session so I could just pull that out and now I can add the inks to it to match up to my scene. So at this point when I pull out this envelope the only decision making I have to do is about the colors which for me is very enjoyable when it's just limited to that one decision about colors. <laughs> so I'm just continuing to build up that color in the background positioning those guys down at the bottom just to see how I'm doing on those colors and then I'll add a little neutral coloring here up at the top with this toffee crunch. I think I grabbed the wrong ink blending tool that had a little red on it so top of that got a little bit red and then I felt like that bench was floating a little bit so just a little tip you can just trim a little piece of cardstock like a little hill and ink that up and pop that up and it will kind of ground that element. So if you're making a scene, just a really little thing you can do is just add like a little hill or a little ground that's darker and it will actually ground the image that you have there. And then what I like to do is to add foam tape behind the little hill and foam tape behind that image. So like behind that bench. So they're popped up on the card. All I did was stamp my sentiment and that card is complete. And again, those additional stamps and dies and everything that's used on each card will be listed in the YouTube description box below. Now we're ready to put this card together. So again, um, we had all those elements tucked away in our envelope and all I had to do was pull them out now and decide on my colors. I decided to add in this picket fence die to sort of match up with that stamp so that it looked like that fence sort of continued beyond because when I put it onto the card I felt like oh this feels odd to me um, with that tree in the background so once I added that other die cut there it was just a perfect match so there are times where when I go to make the card I might reach into my stash and need to die cut one extra element to finish off the card like this picket fence die I hadn't pre die cut that and that's just kind of like a, a decision right in the moment and that's okay because that's just one decision then to make all the other elements were ready to go now to color this tree this is the new rooted in love creative die very unique you can add this to like a little vase die, die cut 
or you can use it as a tree. I just colored that with a dark brown and then I'm just going back and inking the hearts so I could just easily ink those over the brown because the brown was so dark that whatever ink I used wasn't going to discolor that. And I'm just inking them up so that they match that image that I've already colored. So again, another benefit if you do cut it from white, you can match it up to whatever, whatever stamped image you put with it. Here I'm going to add a little inking to my background, starting off of the edge, working my way on in a circular motion, and I'm using less pressure as I move towards the center of the page and as I move up the page or up the paper so that it goes from a darker blue to a lighter blue as it moves up. And then I'll just take my elements, put them back in and see if I've gotten it to the correct or to the level that I like high enough that you still see it but not too high. And then I just adhered everything down, added a little more inking, and stamped a sentiment, and this card was complete. Next, we will make this little card. I love how this little hedgie looks like he's sort of dancing across that word hugs. And I'm gonna do kind of like I did with that tree, just put this dark brown onto the strings of the balloons and the little tag and then all I, I can use uh, my distress inks on the top and not worry about that um, discoloring it because it's a nice dark brown color. This is also a nice design process if you have a small space that you're working in so you don't have to have as many things out at one time so when you're die cutting if you just have a small space to work on or you have to put your things away in between you can just get out the die cutting for the die cutting session do all of that and put it away when it's time to make these cards you pull out your envelope and you can have your inks out but your die cutting machine doesn't have to be out those items can be put away so you can work in a small space and keep things pretty organized as you go. This is our new Hugs Edger creative die set. I love that it cuts that little border. You can see there, it cuts the border where the word hugs can slide right into that. It creates kind of an outline around the top of the die cut word. Here it's kind of imitates a scene. So this is sort of like the grass and then the blue that I'll do in the background will be like the sky. I'm also going to, I decided to ink that word hugs. And then here I'm gonna work on that sky. Same process as before, starting off of the edge, working the way on in a circular motion. Now I have sped this up, of course, but it's the same process. And just going part way up the page. And again, use your dies. If you don't wanna fussy cut something like balloons, then use die cut balloons for that. I love having these in my stash because I can use them with my images that I cut out if I don't want to fussy cut balloons. Next we have these cute little mice <laughs> and this is our new Love Edger creative die and again it works like that Hugs Edger. It cuts that border which you can position at any place on your card up higher or down lower and then you also get that word love, which you can use with the edger portion or you can just use on its own. So really versatile. And you'll notice that while these are all love theme cards, the sentiments used and the style, the color choices used, don't make them specifically Valentine's and they don't, you could give them to friends, you can give them to lots of different recipients any time of year and that's something I really love about Penny Black's love themed release is that you can use it if you like to make traditional red, pink, valentines, you absolutely can use them for that but you can get a lot more use out of them or if you just want some unique love you cards, thinking of you cards, they work really great for that. So I'm just mixing and matching different colors here. If you keep them within sort of the same color family like greens and blues, they're both cooler colors, then you can layer them and not end up with mud. If you aren't sure, just try on a piece of scratch paper <laughs> before you go onto your background. 
And then I do have some stamping I'm going to do on the background. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I made this envelope for this card, I actually stuck this whole stamp in there because I thought, oh, I should use this stamp in the background. So I just stuck it in there. So when I pulled out the envelope and went to make the card, I already had it there. Again, one less decision to make when I got an idea. I could just include it and prepare it and then when I went to make the card I wouldn't have to make that decision. I just stamped that using the same colors of ink that I used on the background so it gives a nice tone on tone look. And I'm just adding a little bit of inking here down on the base of that and I've glued everything together and finally I just put one little heart above them. I think this would make a great missing of missing you card could even send that to a friend with that sentiment. That is the last card. I hope you were able to make it through this long video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as Instagram, our website and blog, and I've linked all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below. Thanks for watching.